And the voice from heaven came and said, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. And we compare this Sunday with last Sunday, there are two themes of Lent. The first one was the suffering, the temptation, the hardship that we take in life. Jesus said, if you love me, you take up your cross and follow me. The cross that we follow, <laughs> to follow Jesus is not easy. But if we follow him, we are going to experience the Tabor. We are going to experience the resurrection. We are going to experience his transfiguration. And today the transfiguration gives us another element of this holy season. We are preparing to this 40 days to arrive at that very high uh, time in the history of the world and even in the calendar of the church, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I like the first reading today because that first reading is a great lesson for each one of us. Remember Abram was 75 when he left Ur to come to Cana. To come with a woman that is barren. And God said to him, you are going to have, you are going to be the father of a big, big nation. And we know that after he tried to have ch ch children with Sarah, the, she cannot conceive. He have a son from a slave, because that was the word of Sarah, so that he will be the heir. But God said, this is not the way I want it. And then finally, Sarah conceived and have Isaac. And now Isaac is about 50, about 12 years old. And Abraham was told to take the boy to Mount Moriah and there he will sacrifice his boy. Without no question, without no uh, disturbance of his, of his willing to do God's will, Abraham took his child, loaded him with wood on his shoulders, he took a little fire with him and a knife and he said to his servant, you remain here till I go and offer the sacrifice. As he planned an altar, made an altar and put the wood on it and tied the boy to put on the fire and about to, about to kill his son, God said to him, enough. Don't do no harm to the child because now I know how much you believed and trusted. And this is the lesson that we le le learn with you within, within land, is to trust in the word of God, to trust in those words that comes from our very strong and very important words that comes from, uh, from God. And because we trust that word, we are going to be saved. And the same a atmosphere go on the tabor. As Abraham was about to offer his only son, God the Father is about to offer his only son on the hill of Golgotha. But before he did that, he needs to strengthen the apostles. He needs to give them a view of what glory he is going to endure. And he take Peter, James, and John and took them to Mount Tabor. And there he transfigured before him. And on each side of him there were Elijah and Moses, the prophecy and the law. And they were conversing with him. And we know that after a scene of this, the, uh, Peter was so overwhelmed that he did not think of himself and his other fellows, fellow men, but he thinks of the scene. Let me build three tents, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. After he not even finished, there was nothing but as voice. This is my beloved son, listen to him. At that very moment, the Old Testament now is closed and the New Testament is open. Jesus now is going to fulfill all that was written about him and he is going to be that lamb, he is going to be that victim, sacrifice for humanity to save the sin of the world. But I like what St. Paul has to say today in that second reading. St. Paul said, Christ suffered for us. God did not let even his son get away from this great cross that he himself endured for him, and that he prepared for himself. But he let him go to the cross for the salvation of humanity. My dear people, as we go to the celebration of the Mass, 
Let us really look at these two readings and apply them to ourselves. Do we have strong faith like Abraham did? Are we willing to give the precious thing that we have to God? And that precious thing is the gift of yourself. Is that you are going to submit yourself to the will of God. That you open your heart to receive Him fully. That you are not going to have no reservation. That you are going to let go of your sinfulness. And let the grace of God pour upon you. So that you cleanse from your sin. You are now going to endure the blessing of the everlasting Easter. We are now entering into the, the second week of Lent. And this season will come to a close very, very shortly. But one of the things that really Lent is all about is examination of conscience. Is to let go of all those sins that we have done, whether we did them, we did, we did them or we plan to do them, or the thoughts or, or evil wishes that we have, that we have to let go of it. And the only way we can do that is by the sacrament of penance, by going to confession. Many times, you know, I hear people say, Well, Father, I have no sins. What am I going to confess the, to the priest? I am alone. I am a widow. I have nothing that I do. Nothing. And if you examine yourself, you will find before you know it, lots of things that you are doing that are not pleasing to the Lord. And that is what we need to confess him for. So that we can be cleansed. We can be transfigured. We can be converted. We can be changed. So that the Lord Jesus, when he comes, when he gave, gave us that promise of, of the resurrection, which is the promise for each one of us, we who are baptized, we are going to endure it for eternity. During this course of land, the church really tried to make us aware of that great transformation we have done in our life, when our parents or as an adult, we enter into the fountain of baptism. Where there we become children of the Trinity. Where there we become children of the Church. Where there we become now brothers and sisters with Christ. And that transformation, of course, because of the evil one, has changed. And has changed through our personal sins. And now, in this season of Lent, the Church is offering a chance to cleanse ourselves from that sin. To receive Jesus very strongly in our heart and to begin a new transformation, a new transformation of a new beginning with Christ. This is what really this Sunday is all about, is that we are going to transform ourselves from the sinful man that we have to the power that Christ gave us in baptism. That that baptism for us will be not only once, but be every day, every day remind us that we are His and his we will want to be. May this Sunday and every Sunday, especially this season of Lent, beginning by really understand the importance of this season. For example, Mass every day during this season. It was a tradition in this country, I don't know who take it away, that many hundreds of people used to go daily Mass. The devotion to the Passion of Christ is not that ingrained in the people, in our Christian people. You know, the passion of Christ is more important during this season that we reflect on how much He loves us to undergo the hardship of the cross, the insult that He received, the crucifixion, the dead, the burial, and also the promise of His resurrection by the Father whom He gave. And that is what we meditate every Friday. Patience of the cross, dear people, is very, very vital during this season. And again, the more intensive of prayer, the more intensive of sacrifice we do, the more intense of arm giving we do, is preparing us to celebrate this Lenten season with the joy of the expectation of the coming Easter. God bless.